hello UT and hello the world, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. When someone dies under mysterious circumstances, you call CSI. But who do you call when the subject in question died eons ago? Lucy, one of the oldest, most complete skeletons of one of our early ancestors, died almost 3.2 million years ago, making her death a case as cold as my dusty foreigner box set. Scientists have been wondering for years what did in our ancient relative, and Dr. John Kappelman, professor of anthropology here at UT, has concluded that Lucy probably died from falling from a tree. So I guess scientists are no longer... stumped. Yeah! Okay, hold on a second, I got a, I got a better one, I got a better one. I, better one. <clears throat> I don't think Lucy... arbors a grudge. Yeah! Okay, wait, I, I, think, I think I can do better. I think I can do better, hold on a second. <clears throat> Looks like Lucy has taken her last bow. So first of all, Dr. Kappelman, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Lucy and what makes her so significant? Uh, Lucy is a, uh, a, a female of the species Oslopithecus afarensis. Uh, she was found in 1974 in the Afar Depression of Ethiopia. Uh, she's represented by much of a skeleton and that makes her very unusual because most of our fossil uh, human ancestors uh, that are discovered are represented by just a few broken elements, maybe just one or two pieces. Even if we're lucky, there might be more than one piece. So what about your project made you conclude how Lucy died? So this is her humerus here. This is the upper arm bone on the right side, so it would fit right up uh, in here. And you can see how the head of this is all fractured down. And uh, so we saw this kind of a fracture. There's also a, a, a fracture in her uh, lower limbs. And these led us to uh, think about how these kinds of fractures uh, occurred. Now again, uh, that most of the fractures, many of the fractures in her body are post-mortem fractures, just stuff that happens to a fossil, to a bone. But these are uh, unique. And this is when looking at these in the clinical literature, uh, we don't see these in other fossils that uh, what happened with this uh, we think is the same thing that happens in modern humans today so that when you uh, when the arm is extended out and uh, it comes in contact with the ground as a result of a fall the elements of the shoulder impact against one another and the scapula this is the end of the shoulder blade here of lucy drives down against the head fracturing all of those elements down and compressing them into the shaft what about her skeletal injuries ruled out other causes of death some sort of a force operated along the axis of the humerus. Uh, it, and what we generally see with this, that the arm has to be extended out and the muscles contracted to hold that arm rigid. This is not the kind of a fracture that you would see if it was just a dead person laying on the ground and somebody stomped on them or kicked them or something. I mean, this is a very severe uh, sort of a fracture. So car accidents do it. Uh, we're very confident Lucy was not in a car 3.2 million years ago what other kinds of things cause this sort of a fracture, uh, it's a fall. It took Lucy nearly three million years to get proper medical scans. We must have the same insurance. So what kind of scientific advances allowed you to draw these conclusions? It, it takes us back to when uh, the Houston Museum of Natural Science put on an exhibit of Lucy back in 2007. So she was uh, stateside at that time, and I had, uh, when I'd heard about that exhibit being planned in the early 2000s, and I proposed to the Ethiopian government that we bring her here to UT so that we could use our high-resolution, high-energy CAT scan facility that's in the Jackson School uh, to actually scan the whole skeleton, that she had never been scanned with high-resolution CAT scans before. When she was first discovered and described in the uh, 70s and into the early 80s, that the team that described her attempted to use medical CT, but the energy levels of medical CT weren't high enough to actually see inside her bones. Lucy's bones have told us a lot about how she died, but what can they tell us about how she lived? So it's been a long running argument uh, going back uh, over 40 years about whether or not Lucy and her kind spent any amount of time in the trees. There are many aspects of the skeleton that suggest to many of us that yes, in fact, they were arboreal part of the time. So they have things like curved fingers, curved toes, uh, the shoulder blade that we've been talking about, the orientation of that actually points up a little bit more than it does in humans. Ours points further to the side, that points up, which suggests a greater range of overhead motion, something that would be useful if you were climbing around in the trees. So what, what is broadly interpreted then for her species is uh, a, a group that was both able to move in the trees and on the ground. The original Lucy skeleton is a very precious specimen kept under lock and key. 
So how can your 3D scans of her be helpful for people in the future? We want people to look at this. We want people to be able to evaluate this hypothesis in the same way that we have. So the Ethiopian government uh, has agreed uh, to the distribution of some of these uh, 3D printouts. And these are of the right arm and also the left knee. Some of, those are some of the most distinctive fractures that we see, these compressive bone-on-bone -bone fractures. So what uh, we've done is on our website, www.elucy.org is we've made these 3D STL files. So the STL stands for stereolithography files. So they're a 3D file that's available to anyone anywhere on the planet to download and then print those out for themselves. This is very exciting news for all manner of sciences and hopefully these findings will continue to tell us more and more about our ancestors. Maybe even these 3D scans can tell me how my favorite circus performer died. Poor Mr. Bananas. He was a great man. If you like this video, please leave a comment, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas, reminding you to stay hooked.